Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. First things first, if you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a subscribe, I'd very much appreciate it. This week we've been super busy. We've been tidying up all the electric fences and hurdles from when we've been grazing cover crops. We have been fixing a drain that we found in a ditch. We have been weighing cattle and we've been bonusing cattle. So I hope that you enjoy what you see. First job of the week is to round up these cattle hurdles. So essentially these cattle hurdles are some Bateman cattle hurdles that we bought earlier this year um, to replace some old gates that we got for getting cattle in at Thornton. They have been an absolute godsend. They're the kind of thing that we bought expecting not to use them very often and we've used them all the time. <laughs> they were always out of the shed. Um, and we've got a bit of a plan for these when we're carving, which I've not really revealed anything. We'll talk about that in another video. But um, I've got three here and I've got three further down the field and they're just in gaps where um, we normally use for arable access. We don't have any gates and we've grazed these fields because they were cover crops, grazed them with the young stock. We bought the young stock in the end of last week and now we're just trying to tidy up. Essentially, dad's rounding up all of the um, electric fences and I'm gonna go and help him in a minute. And I'm charged with sorting out the water troughs and sorting out these hurdles. So let's get to it. If you're looking at some cattle hurdles, these are Bateman ones and they are 10 foot long, six foot high. We got them from Colin Catley, so at Peckleton, have a word with him if you are local and you're interested, he will be able to sort them all out for you. We went for these bigger ones. Um, I think they are the biggest ones that they do. They're definitely the tallest ones that they do. Mm. And we went for them because we just thought the price difference was negligible and in the long run, we're probably glad we spent that extra bit of money. I've just walked up to Dad who's rounding up these electric fences and one of the jobs what we're doing while we're here is back in the winter when he was grazing this, he found this drain down here. We didn't know this drain existed. Well, we think we might know this drain existed. We thought it went out somewhere different, but we found this drain anyway and we're going to dig it out and uh, get it running properly and mark it all up so we know where it is in the future. So this is what we've found, this pipe here, and there's actually that section of pipe had come off the end of it. And once I dug that bit out, we've got loads of water and it's just flowing down the ditch there. Bit surprised, wasn't expecting all that. Now we've uh, cleaned it out, we've marked it all up with that white post there so we can come and find it. We're gonna have to leave it for a couple, well, a few days, I think, because it's pouring that much water out. There's no point in even trying to do anything with it today. But we think it comes, across this field from about where that tree is in the distance because there's a gateway there over the other side of the hedge. Um, so we're thinking it might be coming from a ditch there, but we're gonna go over there in a minute and have a look. So now that we have done all of the fences, it is officially winter and the Polaris needs a good old bath because it is well-deserved, it's worked hard and then we can put her away. So let's get on and clean her. Another job that we really want to get done this week is we want to weigh all of the young stock and we want to weigh the fat heifers as well. And then we, we really lucky I'd like to get all of the cattle bolus with their mineral bolus too. Um, so we're just going to go and start now. We're going to start with the fat heifers.
actually really pleased with those heifers. Um, the biggest one weighed about 650, the smallest one weighed about 575, something like that. Uh, the vast majority of them weighed around the two, about 620 mark, sorry. So really, really pleased. What I'll do now is I'll take those figures off the iPad, put them onto the computer, and then I'll sort of, sort of analyze what their growth rates are and uh, see what's ready and what's not. But we've still got a bit of time left today, so we're gonna go and weigh some of the steers. So we've now weighed all of our young stock and actually pretty pleased with them in general. Um, the first group you saw were the small steers. They averaged probably around about 270, 280 kilos. The smallest one in there is about 180 kilos. It's one of those weedy little things that everyone has that people try to deny that they have. Um, and yeah, they generally were pretty good. The biggest one was just over 300 kilos. The second group you saw were the heifers and the heifers as a rule, weighed average probably around about 300 kilos. The biggest one was about 340. The smallest one was probably around about 240. And then the last group you saw were the big steers. And the big steers, they weighed um, up to 380 kilos and averaged probably about 350. Um, so really, really pleased with those. Uh, they seem to be doing really well. I don't know exactly what they're growing at yet because I haven't looked at them on the computer. But when I do, I'll be able to let you know. Um, so yeah, now we've got all that done, we probably should start and crack on with bolusing some of the cows. Last year, we decided to start and mineral bolus our cows as opposed to giving them buckets in the yard. And the reason for that was that when you put bucket in the yard, you find that some of the cows don't actually take the mineral bucket. They'll avoid, avoid licking it and whatever else. And some of the cows will gorge on it. And that can lead to deficiencies in certain cows and often, then that leads to difficulties when you start calving and so on and so forth. So we thought a better option would be to actually mineral bolus all of the cattle so that they have exactly what they're supposed to have. So we give them these Smart Trace mineral boluses. Um, they have two of these and they go in a gun all at once and we put it down their neck. You sort of put it in the gun. It's a big long contraption, it looks like this. And you put it back over the top of the tongue 
and then uh, you push the boluses in and essentially you have to get it over the back of the tongue or else they'll just spit it back out. And we give them these boluses, they'll sit in their stomachs for like eight months, I think these ones last, um, and slowly start and dissolve over time and release uh, the minerals that the cattle need into their rumen. And essentially that means that we know every single cow has had all of the minerals that it needs um, for the next eight months. So that's why we do it. We could um, use a powdered mineral and we don't have to do the young stock because the young stock have minerals in their um, ration which they get in the morning. So they don't need to be bolused, but the cattle, they just get fed on silage and it gets put down the trough in the um, straw shredder. So there's no other way of really getting minerals into them and guaranteeing it. If you use a mixer wagon to mix all your feeds up, you could put powdered minerals into the, uh, into the mix because essentially every time a cow goes and takes a mouthful of food, it will get the minerals that it needs, but we don't have that luxury. So mineral boluses are the one. And that's the castle all bolus, which is a great job to have ticked off the list. What you might have noticed is in the background behind me, dad was trimming up all of the tails of the cows. Now, the reason why we do that is um, it's just a general hygiene, good management practice. Essentially, if you have long tails and the cows get them really mucky, they can wipe that muck all around their udders. So we try to trim them, get them all short so that when we start calving, um, the teeth stay clean and the calves haven't got that area where you can get a lot of transmitted disease. Because if you've ever suffered with something like yonis, one of the biggest vectors for disease is the teats when they get mucky. Um, Dad eradicated yonis from our herd probably like 15 or 20 years ago, but it's just a good practice thing that we've continued to do since then, because at the end of the day, prevention is better than cure. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a subscribe, I'd very much appreciate it. Look after yourselves, stay safe. See you soon. Bye.